Mr. Biscuit fled down the alleyway, his feet leaving splotches in the muck, coat wrapped tightly against the breeze, eyes darted around, only half aware of the nebulous shapes of the alley that appeared thin and vague in the dim light that penetrated the fog. Voices could be heard from all directions, some close, some far, crying out, sharp and bitter, fading as matching footsteps receded in the distance. Mr. Biscuit stopped about halfway down the alley, hands on thighs, his back heaved with each breath, and he looked up for a second. At one end of the alley, the light from a street lamp penetrated the fog slightly and cast a glow on the nearby walls, doors, pools of mud, and assorted cast-off items that were lined up against the edges of the alleyway. In the other direction, candlelight from an open doorway flooded the alley for a foot or two, and then left everything beyond in fog and total darkness. Right where he stood was the in-between, the one spot where light never reached. Overhung with balconies, laundry, and hastily constructed walkways from one side of the alley to the other, this particular spot was hidden from even the brightest lights. From any other point of view, Mr. Biscuit had stepped over a threshold and ceased to exist. When a large crate presented itself as a darker form amongst the darkness, mostly buried in cast-off rags, wooden planks, and other bits of garbage, Mr. Biscuit half fell, half walked over, and started to remove the garbage piece by piece. Carefully, he picked up the wood scraps and moved them to one side, stacked, but not obviously so. Then he placed the scrap, paper, and fabric over the pile. The last to go was an old tarp that half covered the top of the crate and spilled over the front side. This, Mr. Biscuit moved aside, but only partially, leaving the top still covered. It's still here? It's still here? He whispered to himself as he rolled up the fabric. Will he come? He asked himself again and again. Will he? He glanced to either side, heard more footsteps that moved close by, but there was no movement in the alley but the breeze. Mr. Biscuit felt around the bottom edge of the crate. His fingers moved lightly against the edge, and he felt, not saw, the rough of the metal surface. When his fingers alighted on a hard ring shape, he grabbed it, and with a large exhale of air, he pulled up the crate, the force eliciting shrieks of wood on the metal. He lifted the crate edge high enough that he could duck under one side and enter, then he slowly lowered the edge once his feet were inside the perimeter. The creaks of the crate sides as they joined pierced the quiet of the alleyway only for a short moment. Mr. Biscuit shuffled around on all fours, moved to one side of the crate where a small opening showed the view back down the alley towards the street lamp. He had often wondered how it was that he could see the alley, but the alley could not see him. He looked out, squinting to see past the fog, but the alley was empty of all but garbage. He pulled away for a second, wiped his eyes, and blinked. Will he come? He muttered to himself and leaned up against the crate. He pushed his face more forcefully against the rough inner walls, scraped his cheek across the hard surface, felt the sharp ridges and angular bumps. He peered out the opening again. Eyes moved in a repetitive arch. No, 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 he muttered. No, not here. Mr. Biscuit turned around, leaned his back against the crate wall, and pulled his legs in, close to his face. He squeezed his eyes shut, held them tightly, and rocked back and forth, while he brushed his lips against the worn fabric of his pants, stretched tightly over his knees. No, 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 he continued to mutter. Soon he stopped, as he slipped into unconsciousness a deep, deep sleep of exhaustion. The stiff folds of his pants slowly indented the skin on his face, 
as each breath relaxed his neck and shoulders a bit more, and gravity pulled his head down. time came a knock on the wood, a smart, quick tap against the rusted metal braces that held together the ragged shipping crate. The knock vibrated through Mr. Biscuit's back, and he woke abruptly, neck momentarily locked in place with stiffness. Ah! He winced and turned his head from side to side to ease the muscles. Mr. Biscuit then reached into his coat and produced a stubby taper, a short, misshapen finger of a candle, which blossomed into a flame when lit with a match from a small box he kept in his left pocket. He grumped, turned to thrust his face back against the wall, and peeked out the small opening with one eye. Mr. B, the voice barely audible beneath the undertones of the city's groans, shrieks, and minor explosions. Mr. B, it's me. For a moment, nothing happened. The alley quiet. The breeze danced the fog along the stone walls. But then the top of an old boot appeared, just inches from Mr. Biscuit's eye. Holly gotten smidgen pie, the voice whispered. Riddle and fake. Mr. Biscuit sighed shuffled backwards and jammed his fingertips into the crack between the floor and the crate wall. He then lifted the edge of the crate, the creak of the rusted nails as they separated from the wood again, loud against the muffled fog of the alley. You missed a word. It's enfig, not infig, said Mr. Biscuit, as a long shadow creeped under the edge of the crate twisted and turned for a second before it solidified and a manky mop of hair crawled in, being careful not to get hooked on one of the exposed nails. Nah, said the voice, and the mop of hair grew into the form of a small boy, the dirty, scruffy clothing lit by the flickering candle. Careful, whispered Mr. Biscuit, threads a little and rips a plenty. Those nails can still do damage, Mr. P. Mr. Biscuit's voice, only slightly annoyed. Mr. Pennyroyal smiled back. The candlelight showed a dark set of teeth between two pitted and peeling lips, the gaping holes left by missing teeth darker than the gloom of the alleyway. Quick, like, close it down. Mr. Pennyroyal pointed to the edge of the crate and then turned to make sure that his feet had cleared the wall before Mr. Biscuit finished lowering the sign down. The ruckus draws nigh. It is as close as ever, thicker than the last time, and moving the fastest I have ever seen. The nails groaned a fourth time as the wall was lowered and the rusted spikes were returned to the many holes. Here! Mr. Pennyroyal reached into his coat and pulled out a small cloth bag that bursted with a coarse dust, his eyes wide with laughter. Heavens, smiled Mr. Biscuit. How so much? One hand reached out to feel the rough cloth as the other brought the candle closer and illuminated both of them. Ah, was easy. The smarmy baker on View Street, you just know the one. Hims that rubs himself up and down against any two-penny girl in the alleyway. Mr. Pennyroll pulled a large, slightly burnt bun from another pocket. And see, I got the good stuff from his dustbin, just bursting with old flour, ash, and burnt bread. He's just tossed it all like. He broke off a small piece and ground the bread into crumbs. It'll help the paste. He then sprinkled the crumbs over the floor, where they mixed with the grime and ink of the headlines, bylines, and high society gossip pages that were pasted many layers thick against the floor, walls, and ceiling of the crate. Ah, swell! Good finding! Mr. Biscuit shuffled across the paper, which cracked with every movement to the other end of the crate. There he picked up a large dented can and shuffled back. It's just shy empty, 
he said as he handed the almost empty can to Mr. Pennyroyal. I'll, I'll do the ups. Mr. Biscuit pointed to the ceiling of the crate. Mr. Pennyroyal looked up and watched as the light flickered from the candle and created shadows across the patchwork of paper. Mr. Biscuit dripped a few drops of wax onto the floor between them and then set the candle upright in the wax. Mr. Pennyroyal watched him, waited as the candle set in the wax before he broke off some bread and handed it to Mr. Biscuit. They both crumbled up the burnt bread and then filled the can with the flour, breadcrumbs, and some water taken from a leather pouch strapped to Mr. Biscuit's waist. When they were done, they sat back to back, their bodies as close to the center of the crate as they could get, without catching fire from the candle, still standing tall in its holder of hard wax. How's the ruckus? Mr. Biscuit asked. Came up a ways? Yeah, chased me most of the way here, but I can run faster. Mr. Pennyroyal replied and waved his hands towards his legs. It's bad, very bad. People gathered, thick as mud, the crazies, bathed up at the gate. I could hear them all the way to here, screeching and fussing. Mr. Pennyroyal turned his head for a moment, crossed his eyes and stuck out his tongue. It's silly. The gate never opens, not when the ruckus is about. Mr. Biscuit turned around and nodded his head up and down. I got a bit said Mr. Pennyroyal, as he pointed his middle finger towards Mr. Biscuit's nose. Seize? Mr. Biscuit looked in the dim light, and then shook his head left and right. It's just a bit. Mr. Pennyroyal pulled his hand back and stuck his finger in his mouth. I know, Mr. Biscuit replied. Remember, it got me toe, just as I runs away. Mr. Biscuit reached down and rubbed the toe of his boot. Hurts there some. Then he reached behind with his right hand, stretched out to the limits of its size, and procured a pile of paper from the corner nearest to him. Mr. Pennyroll took some of the paper from the top and began to rip it into long shreds. Layer by layer, they dunked the paper into the paste and slapped the wet strips over top of the old ones. Inch by inch, they sealed themselves into the crate. And there was no other sound than the rip slurp and slap of the strips of paper as they were torn, dunked into the paste, and spread on the inner walls of the crate. Each moved around the floor and recoded every surface. down by the water, like, looking for the sign, Mr. Pennyroyal started to say. It was crazy. Why are you chasing after nothing? It's just some scrabble, like all them others. You's and me done it lots, Mr. P. Mr. Biscuit huffed. It's not just scrabbling, Mr. B, replied Mr. Pennyroyal. Just imagine, if we found it, we's be rich, and then we could move up on the other side, past the gate. He waved the wet paper in his hands towards the back of the crate. Eyes heard, he said with much indignation. You heard stuff's and nonsense. No, it's true, like, find the sign, find the C-K-E, and use win. Win what? Maybe you win a quick kick in the head, Mr. Biscuit interrupts. Use hang around the docks. Use know it's danger down there. It's the ruckus time. Why you be stupid, Mr. P? Not stupid, Mr. Pennyroyal mumbled and picked up a piece of torn paper, dunked it in a pot of paste, and applied it to a dry spot on the wall just by his shoulder. Use could get eaten by the ruckus, all bones in the end, like all those others. Mr. Biscuit lowered a strip of paper into the paste wrung off the excess, and applied the wetted paper to the ceiling, careful to do so just an inch or two to the left, 
so the paste did not drip on his head. His might not come back, whispered Mr. Biscuit to himself and moved to the opposite wall. He grabbed one of the few full sheets of newsprint, scrunched it into a ball. He then looked briefly through the opening, jerked his head closer only for a second, before he stuffed the opening with a ball of paper. No ruckus, he remarked, but Mr. Pennyroyal was silent. Mr. Biscuit stuck his whole hand in the tin, now only half full, and got his fingers covered in paste. He then wiped his hand over the ball of paper, covered it in a layer of gloop. He then grabbed another sheet of full paper, scrunched it up into another ball, and squeezed it into the opening beside the previous one. Another dip in the tin, and a few smaller balls of paper, and the opening was fully closed in, ready to receive a layer of more paper and paste. Mr. Pennyroyal and Mr. Biscuit met briefly at a corner scene, but neither of them looked at the other, though their shoulders were smushed together, and each could feel the warm breath of the other on their face. Each time one of them reached a seam, they took extra care to poke the paste and paper inside and sealed all the cracks. Outside the crate walls, the city had grown quiet. Less and less screams could be heard. The door in the alley that had provided a small patch of light was now closed, presumably locked, and most likely sealed over, as no light could be seen between the door and the frame. The lamp at the end of the alley was still lit, but the breeze had blown more and more fog down the alley, and the light could no longer penetrate more than a foot or two. But neither Mr. Pennyroyal or Mr. Biscuit could tell. The thickened walls muffled most of the sound. The candle hid any light from the alley that might have peeked through the seams of the crate, and both of them were doing their best to ignore each other. Look, tis grand, Mr. Biscuit said after a while. He passed a scrap of paper to Mr. Pennyroyal and smiled. You read, he said, and poked at the picture of a richly dressed lady. Mr. Pennyroyal looked over the paper and turned it round and round. Nah, not you and me's type, you know, replied Mr. Pennyroyal as he handed the paper back. The floor was the last to be papered. Each one lifted themselves off their knees, balanced on their toes, and propped their upper half up with their fingertips pressed into the floor. And being careful not to drag their knees across the freshly papered areas, they started on the outer reaches of the floor and worked themselves into the middle of the crate. By the time they were back to back again, the wax of the candle had melted down to a very short mound in the middle of the crate. The light was low and fewer shadows were cast on the walls. "'Tis time," said Mr. Pennyroyal. "'Mr. B, go first. Mr. Biscuit dunked his finger in the last of the paste and wiped it down Mr. Pennyroyal's forehead. Use now, Mr. P. Mr. Pennyroyal mirrored the actions and painted a slightly smaller line on Mr. Biscuit's forehead. (laughs) You look holy like, Mr. B. Like the Arnoldites, except you don't have robes, or or none of the coin either. Mr. Pennyroyal laughed as he wiped his finger on his coat. Powers of the paste to behold, save us from the ruckus. He raised both his hands to the ceiling of the crate as he preached and mushed his palms into the wet, plastered newsprint. Then they both lay on the soggy paper floor, faced each other, their legs stretched out to opposite corners of the crate, and a small candle flame between them. Member, roll, always roll, or you get stuck for sure, warned Mr. Pennyroyal. Mr. Biscuit smiled at the dim-faced opposite, and rolled just a bit back and forth. paper walls, Mr. P, the candlelight, the reflection against the torn edges of the many layers of newsprint 
pasted to every surface that flickered and danced. Mr. B took a deep breath, held for a moment the entirety of everything in his lungs, before he slowly let out a thin stream of breath between pursed lips. Mr. Pennyroyal had always said that the smell of the crate was only slightly better than the ruckus. Rank, he'd say, like old puddin, always with more conviction than was felt. Mr. Biscuit always replied with a laugh, but then he would take a deep breath, pull in as much air as his partially plugged nose could take, the slightly acrid fumes of the new paste, the sweaty musk of the old paste, all awash in the musty, dirty, smoky rank the two of them had brought with them. It was home. And then Mr. Pennyroy would throw a half-hearted punch and laugh as he emptied his pockets and offered a selection of his stolen bounty. The bruised fruit, stale bread, smushed cheese, or sometimes a bottle half-filled with a pungent homebrew of some sort was always offered. And then the moment was replaced, and Mr. Biscuit chewed an old cheese rind and turned it into mush, carefully between the remains of his back teeth, a dull pain in his chest. Mr. Pennyroyal smiled back and quickly blew out the candle to save the tiny piece of wick for when they awoke. By the time the ruckus flowed by the street lamp at the head of the alley, snakes its ways down the center and surrounded the crate, Mr. Biscuit and Mr. Pennyroyal were fast asleep. The thick pasted walls kept out all but the tiniest whiff of the stench. So small, the overwhelming rank of the crate more than covered it. A small gust of breeze blew a wisp of ruckus around the top of the crate and towards the stone wall behind it. The vine leaves that creeped along the crack between the stones waved in the breeze as the fog passed. Pass it on. Safe? Did they make it? Yes. Pass safe. it on. Pass it on. Yes. Are they safe? Safe. Safe. Are they safe? Safe. Safe. Did they make it? Safe. Pass it on. Yes. Yes. They're safe. <laughs>